Hello, my name is John Lima. I'm with Lima Family Farms, and today we're going to talk about my chickens. So basically at Lima Family Farms, we raise egg-laying hens, and we, re we raise broilers for meat. So with our broilers, what we do is we raise what they call the Cornish Cross variety. Uh, it's a very popular variety. We, uh, we bring them in sometime around the end of February uh, as day old chicks. You're able to uh, get these delivered right in the post office. That's what we do. We get about a couple hundred every other week. Uh, so they go into our, our brooder house and then probably by the end of March when the weather's a little bit better, they go out into the field and then they're in the field for the remaining four or five weeks of their life. And then that's when they go to our processing area on the farm and then they're a process for uh, meat birds. Um, so the way that, the way that works is that that happens from the end of February. We go every other week, we bring a shipment of birds in, we bring in what they call straight run. So we get an equal amount of male and female. The idea is in about eight weeks, the males will finish with a weight of around five pounds, finished weight in the refrigerator. And by the uh, ninth week, the females are normally up to that same size. Um, so that's pretty much how we do that. We are at non GMO here, not organic. So we uh, get feed delivered um, every couple of weeks. We get six tons of feed delivered for both uh, our egg layers and our, our meat birds. And that's pretty much how we, how we operate and we feed them. Um, the, uh, the meat birds go into these uh, little houses in the field, about 100 uh, birds in each house, uh, somewhat similar to the Joel Salton approach, although our houses look a little bit different. Uh, they're on wheels and they get moved probably twice a day. So they're on fresh grass um, and the birds pretty much stay in those houses. Um, years ago, we had uh, predation problems with that, that not during the nighttime, we'd have raccoons come in and try to dig up underneath the, uh, underneath the houses and kill some of the birds. Um, so what we have done is we put those houses in the same field that we have our egg layers and our egg layers are protected by uh, several Italian Marema sheepdogs. And with the addition of the sheepdogs, our predation problems are, have been tremendously reduced, if not eliminated. Okay, so regarding the, the meat birds, so there's two options that uh, we have available to us. There is the Cornish Cross, and there's also a, a breed called the Freedom Red Ranger. Uh, we tried both. Uh, the Freedom Red Ranger uh, is a much more pasture-oriented bird. It does much better on the pasture. Uh, the negative to that bird is it takes close to 10 weeks to go to maturity, where the cor Cornish Cross is eight. So therefore, I got two more weeks I have to feed the bird. So that costs more money for my customer to charge them when I can be cheaper with the uh, eight week bird. Uh, also, that bird is not as big. The breast aren't as large. And uh, most of my customers seem to prefer the Cornish Cross. Although I will say though that uh, from a taste perspective, the Freedom Red does taste pretty good. It's on par, if not maybe a little bit nicer than the Cornish Cross but the other reasons uh, kind of outweigh it. And that's pretty much why we elected not to go that route. Okay, so the egg layer birds, they're, they're obviously a totally different breed than the meat birds. Uh, the, the bird that we use is what they call a red sex link. Uh, we purchased them from uh, Moyer's Chicks. Um, and what we do is uh, we buy them at uh, 16 weeks when they're pullet size. A uh, bunch of things to be aware of with the egg layers. Um, so we used to buy them as baby chicks, but uh, and, but we did not de-beak them. Uh, the problem we ran into is that sometimes some of the birds will uh, literally not be good birds and they will tend to peck and they cause a lot of damage to the other birds, causing uh, damage to the eggs and, and, and just to the overall health of the other birds. 
So we did some research and found out that it's much better to have them de-beaked. We didn't see any real change in their ability to pasture for, for bugs and grasses in the field. So because we don't want to go through the expense of having to, uh, or the time to de-beak um, a thousand birds a year, we elected to uh, just buy them at 16 weeks old. So a 16 week old bird for us uh, cost about $6.50. That's a non-organic pullet bird. If you wanted to buy a, an organic bird, they could be cost as much as nine or $10 a bird. Ridiculous, but that's what it is. Um, so, so what we do is we raise a flock of approximately a thousand birds. Uh, and we bring in about 350 birds or thereabouts three times a year. Once in the uh, beginning of April, once in maybe in May and then another one in July. We spread it out over the course of the summer because I still have my old flock of a thousand birds. So what we do is we take the new 350, put them in a separate field, and then as they start to lay eggs, we start to take out the older hens and we use them for soup chickens and we sell them in our store for soup chickens and they, they move pretty much, we can sell all of them. So what we do is over the course of a season, we will get rid of our old flock of a thousand and we have a new flock of a thousand. Uh, again, we're using non-GMO feed just to give you an idea of the difference. Um, if I was to buy organic feed, it's running, I'm gonna say about 44 cents a pound right now. Uh, Non-GMO feed costs about 20 cents a pound. So if you do the math, that will cost you about $1.25 per dozen in cost for food only. So if you're selling your birds, your, I'm sorry, your eggs for say 5.50 a dozen, uh, non-organic, organic, you'd have to raise your price a dollar and a quarter just for the cost of the feed. Um, we just, we've talked to our customers and for the most part, I don't think they really wanted to spend the extra money. We didn't really see the value of it, especially considering that most of that organic grain comes from overseas and I don't see what value that is to that, but it's another story for another day. Um, so that's what we do. So as far as the, the cost of the eggs, uh, we have found over the years that we, we run uh, uh, four different enterprises here, or actually five. We have egg layers, meat birds, pork, beef, and vegetables. Uh, I've found over the years that every one of them is, can be a profitable venue. It's more a question of how it fits within your own system. I mean, for example, I, I, I raise a thousand egg layers and I sell all the eggs, okay? Um, so what we do here is I have two people who work taking care of all my broilers, all my egg layers, all my pork, and they take care of ma maintaining the fences. And those two people, by adding them in and putting all the cost for the feed, the labor for collecting and cleaning and everything else, it nets out for a positive, a positive experience. Obviously, if all you're doing are eggs uh, and nothing else, um, you could just run the numbers. I mean, uh, you should be able to be profitable. The, the question is, is, you know, a, a person doing it on their own, I mean, you gotta do a lot of eggs to be able to make enough money just doing eggs and raise a family. So I look at the eggs as being a part of an overall system, but, um, but yes, they are profitable. And so is processing meat birds is very profitable. Uh, if you if you're, know how to do it, especially if you process the birds yourself on your own farm, it's very profitable. Um, you know, and again, it all depends on if you're doing the work, then you're not hiring somebody else to do it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, all the question is, what do you determine to be profit? Is profit because you're sitting there and somebody else is doing all the work? 
and when it's all said and done, you make a small percent over top of it? Or are you looking at profit where you are raising the birds, you're doing almost all the work, and the end result is that's considered your profit? Well, there's a lot more profit in that. But that's really not profit because you actually had cost incurred by you doing the work yourself. So it's kind of a, how do you define profit? When we get to like middle of March and it's time to put the birds out in the field, um, uh, uh, they're, they're moved every day. Um, so what we had found out was that with the meat birds, they're in a confined space. So what, has, what happens is there with them, we'll line maybe eight, nine, 10, 12 houses right across the field and then they're moved one footprint twice a day onto new grass as they go through the field. And that's how they're rotationally grazed. When it comes to the egg layers, uh, what we do with them is the field that they're in is about maybe an eight to 20 acre field, totally fenced in with uh, some kind of a wire mesh so animals can't easily get in and the chickens can't easily get out. And it's also electrified and our dogs live in that area. So those birds live in these elevated uh, tractor houses, which are on wheels, and they get moved at least once a day, one footprint, but they're left to roam the entire field. Now they pretty much stay close to the house, but, but they do move around, they do get around. So, but, but, but what we try to do is not to let um, all the waste accumulate for more than one day in any one spot. And we're rewarded by that because our grasses just become totally lush by doing that. It's just amazing how that works. Um, again, this works because of our dogs. We're, we're free to let them roam. Uh, at nighttime, before we had our dogs, we'd have to go out there at nighttime. And if they weren't in the houses all buttoned up, we'd put them into the houses. And that was a real labor effort. Now, we don't even worry about it. There's nights when you go out there a summer night when it's warm and you'll see a dog sleep in there and you'll see 500 hens all in a big circle all around the dog. And that's where they all sleep. That's pretty neat. And they're protected. So that's kind of how we do it. And then uh, what we do is that 28, so our, our beef rotationally graze roughly every 42 to 44 days or in the summer. So what happens is in 42 to 44 days, that fields where the chickens are in is ready for the cows to graze. So the cows will come in and they'll do maybe an acre a day in that eight to 20 acre field that where the chickens are in and they will graze through that field to be able to cut, cut it down and get it down so the chickens can walk better through the field because the grass gets pretty intense. Um, but that's how we kind of work the rotational grazing out. Okay, let's go. We're going to go process how hey, we process chickens. This is so much fun. <laughs> okay, so this is our killing cone. It's frozen solid right now. But basically, you take your bird, put it upside down, goes down through here. The neck comes out here. You cut the neck and basically it bleeds out. All right, so that's how we do that once. The birds are all in here. You can see there's maybe six or seven, eight birds at a time. You can be doing this. When the birds are dead and they're ready to go, the next thing you do is you have to get them so that they, um, we scald them so that the feathers will come off easy. So what happens is you can't see much of it now, but this tank is our scalding tank. Okay, these, these are a lot of our coolers, which are not normally here. They're normally on the ground, but everything is up out of the, off the ground right now for security and things. So basically this keeps the water about 160 degrees, something like that. I think it's actually 144 degrees. But we put the birds in here, they rotate on a cycle in there after so many seconds, we pull them out and then they go into this machine here, which is our plucker. Okay, and this one here, this thing spins around at a fast speed. There are these very soft rubber teats in here. So what happens is as it goes around in here, the feathers come off the bird. When they're done in here, the bird is totally defeathered. They take them out of here, they go into a cooling tank, 
one of these tanks that it cools cools the tank cools the birds down and then it goes over onto this table here and then this table is where they eviscerate them they open up the birds they take out the guts and the intestines and everything they clean them all up and then basically once it's done in here it goes into another cold water tank to cool the birds down so then after that you see these two pieces of board here with these uh, little PVC piping that's sticking out. Well, those boards literally get put into this other room in here and they let, they're, they're on the table and we actually take the birds and we actually take the bird and we put the cavity over top of that PVC pipe. That allows the, the bird to drain for the water, the water to get off the bird. Then we literally take the plastic bag, put the bag over the bird, lift the bird up, we tie it tight, and then we actually have a tank of boiling water that we actually put into the tank with a slight slit in the plastic, and that eviscerates the air out and it kind of like shrink wraps the bird. And from there, it goes right into the refrigerator. So that's kind of how we do this. And I mean, obviously, if you came here from May on through the summer, every Wednesday, this is a hopping area for anywhere from... Anywhere from 60 to 150 birds are getting processed once a week on a Wednesday. And that's kind of what we do here. Um, going into this room, this is kind of where we do our eggs. So you could see when I was telling you how, how clean the eggs are, there's, there's some of the eggs that we got today. You could see these came right from the field and you could see how clean the eggs are. I mean, that's typically the kind of egg. So these eggs come in here, they get checked, they get weighed, cleaned if they need to be cleaned, and then they're packaged and, and put on, on the, onto the table here, and then they're, they're categorized and they're shipped out for sale, whether it's to, uh, to our wholesale accounts or for our store right here. We're going to go to the house where the egg-laying chickens are. It's a greenhouse, let's do it. So in the winter, so what happens is when we get to uh, the end of November and there's no more grass growing in the field, we built a uh, large greenhouse that the chickens live in during the winter months from like end of November through middle of March. So that's where we're going now to see, to see the birds collect eggs. We collect eggs here three or four times a day. Um, uh, as, as cold as it is outside with the sun and the birds in there, it's probably about 75 degrees in there today, even though it's not even freezing. It's freezing out here. We also use this greenhouse for tomatoes come springtime after the birds leave here. So... The shade cloth also helps them. They like it this way because they don't like to be in the real bright sunlight when they're laying when they're laying their eggs. So this helps to uh, make them feel more comfortable from an egg laying perspective. So one of the things that you have to worry about with chickens is they need 16 hours of light per day to be able to properly continue with their everyday egg laying. Um, so in the winter time, you're down to nine, 10 hours of light for the worst time. So we actually have timers in here that go on early in the morning and also go in later at night so that the average light they have in here goes between 15 and 16 hours a day. And then we adjust that as the timing changes with the season and all. But it's a big difference. If you don't do that, you'll get way, way less eggs. Tremendous, tremendous difference between the two. Show me, show me that roll top method again, just because it was a little... Steamy. Okay, so 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 the way the way it works is, can you, so basically the bird comes in, sits over here. When they lay their egg, the egg is laid here, and then it just rolls out that way. And that's that's how you know, that's how you can keep the egg say nice and clean. Hi, Polar. Hi, buddy. Hey, Polar. So this is Polar. Huh? Oh. This is one of our watchdogs. Has he, uh, has he eaten any? 
He did when he was young. He used to eat them a lot and he would get punished for that, didn't you? Hmm? Huh? He sure is. <laughs> You're a ham over here. You like this. Come on, Paul. Come on. He doesn't know if that thing is going to hurt the chickens. We fill this guy up and then it comes out of here and we have it go off into three different waterers. Okay. So at nighttime when it gets really cold out, what we do is we just take this all off so it doesn't freeze. And then in the morning we put it back out here again. So we give them, because we have so many birds, these are our outside feeders for, the, for during the summertime. And these guys, you can almost put a ton of feed in these guys and drag them along in the field. So this will make sure we always have them enough feed for them to eat. Uh. Springtime, around middle of March, birds leave here, it's empty. So we take, there's probably a good 12 to 15 inches of, of uh, leaves and wood chips in here. So that all comes out of here and then we clean it all up and we leave a small amount in, we rotivate it in and then we get ready for our tomatoes to go in here for the summertime. And then we have, uh, we use uh, grafted tomatoes and they grow in here for the summertime. Another important item that you have to be aware of is uh, so towards the end of the day, towards the end of the day, um, the birds are finished laying their eggs. So what we do is we will literally, we take these guys and we put up their roost bars. Okay, the significance of that is that if you do not do that, the birds, when they go to sleep, they love to sleep in the nest boxes. And if they do that, next thing you know, they get really dirty. They get, they poop in them and everything. And then they're all dirty. And then you got to go clean them. So what will happen is we will put these up around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll put them up because uh, we're done laying their eggs. And then at nighttime, we come in and feed the dogs about 8 o'clock at night. And they're all asleep, the hens. Then we lower these down. And that way they're good to go for first thing in the morning when the chickens start laying their eggs. Mm -hmm.